sometimes the hardest answer to accept is wait. It's difficult to be left in limbo, wondering how God will handle our problem, but we must have faith that he will. That is how God answers prayers. You have probably heard this a thousand times, and you believe it completely. Yes, no, and wait may sound comforting, but here's the thing that I would like to help you understand. Yes, no, and wait is actually an optical illusion. Let me show you how this illusion works. Imagine that I put a jug of milk on the counter, and I say to you, pray to the jug of milk. Now I say to you, the jug of milk answers prayers in the form of yes, no, and wait. Let's see what happens. Now what is going to happen? There are three scenarios. Scenario one, out of the blue, a check for $1,100 arrives in the mail tomorrow. It's an unexpected tax refund check from the IRS. I say to you, see, the jug of milk answered your prayer. So two, seven weeks later, out of the blue, you get a cost of living raise and it happens to increase your salary by $1,200 per year. You just had to wait patiently. Scenario three, nothing happens for six months. You ask me why. I say, we have to trust that the jug of milk knows what's best. Let's be patient. Look at what happened. In scenarios one and two, the jug of milk really did answer your prayers. And in scenario three, we're waiting for it to answer your prayer, knowing that it's doing what is best for you. Now let me ask you, will you get down on your knees and worship this jug of milk? Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. In this video, we heard this atheist trying to prove to us that, you know what, there is no miracles in Christianity and Christianity is false. And even he considered God as a five gallon of milk and, you know, the milk will provide you money. And if the money came to you, it's happening by accident. Are you going to worship milk? You know, very stupid argument. Very, very stupid argument. First, you know, uh, uh, miracles is not something happened to you like you get a check of money. This is very stupid. Miracles is something even scientists cannot explain. Like as an example, somebody have an accident and he die. Like even doctors, they said he die and then he is alive again. This is a miracle. And even doctors, they cannot explain it. And actually one of the videos of this gentleman, the atheist who tried to prove to us that his father used to be like this, and he in somehow he became uh, look better, you know, he became a human. No problem, you're still a monkey for me. Because this is what you want to say. This is what you are trying to prove. You are a monkey. You are still a monkey. No problem. When a miracle happened, it is something nobody can explain what it is. Not five gallons of milk and you got a check from the IRS. How stupid, how dumb is your example even? At least make a real test. At least be an immature person. Go right now and search for Christianity miracles. You will find millions of miracles happening for real, especially in the medicine in the medical field people who have cancer people who have diseases pro you know a lot of problems doctors one of the videos this man himself he made it was about why if you lost your arm god don't provide you with a new arm go and watch it in his video he said i think it was the number 65 percent of doctors believe in miracles he said that in his video so even doctors believe in miracles what miracles is then Miracles is something nobody can explain except no one. Except who? Except it's called miracle. Except it is coming from God. Because no, I can understand. I am a scientist. I am a doctor. And still I could not know. I do not know how and why it happened. So what I call it? I call it a miracle. So even doctors who don't believe in God, they believe in miracles. Because they can't understand what happened. Then you will see an atheist coming to you saying, Oh, how come about you pray to your God to send you money and you know what if he said doesn't send you money it's mean your God is not God first God is not bank God is not my slave God don't work for me and I don't ask God to do things for me I pray to God there's a huge difference in a Christianity millions and millions happened and many millions will happen and God he choose where and when he will do his miracle because there is many like this man they don't believe until they see and even even after they see still they don't want to believe because those miracles are exist and real but the most important thing in Christianity is the following if we go and search in the Bible we will see 
how important Jesus is saying and repeating always that your faith is what going to have you or have your prayer answered your request is answered it is your faith and you will see those people they are people who they are accepting the faith which means they are accepting the teaching of Christ faith in what not only faith that God is exist not only faith that Jesus is real not only faith that he is the Lord it is faith in what he asked you to do faith in his teaching this is why he said not everyone say to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will which mean faith and the one who lived the life of Christ his prayer is answer and he said not everyone say Lord Lord which means there's many they call themselves Christians there's many they pray they say as you see Lord Lord but they are not living the life of Christianity are they Christians according to the Lord no only those who live the life of Christ only those who perform their life they are giving they feed the hunger they feed the poor they visit the prisoner they visit the, the, the sick you know those who they are going you know doing the work of Christ those are the one their prayers will be answered so not everyone he say Lord Lord not everyone who make a prayer not everyone who say I have faith if you have faith you live his life I hope I did answer the answer is very easy life in Christianity is living the life of Christ with his faith not by your own thank you Christ is Lord and atheists are a bunch of dummies I mean Matthew 9 and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city and behold they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed and Jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee and behold certain of the scribes said within themselves this man blasphemeth and Jesus knowing their thoughts said wherefore think ye evil in your hearts for whether is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins then saith he to the sick of the palsy arise take up thy bed and go unto thine house and he arose and departed to his house but when the multitudes saw it they marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men and as Jesus passed forth from thence he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and he saith unto him follow me and he arose and followed him and it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples and when the Pharisees saw it they said unto his disciples why eateth your master with publicans and sinners but when Jesus heard that he said unto them they that be whole need not a physician but they that are sick but go ye and learn what that meaneth I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance then came to him the disciples of John saying why do we and the Pharisees fast oft but thy disciples fast not and Jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved while he spake these things unto them behold there came a certain ruler and worshipped him saying my daughter is even now dead but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live and Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples and behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if I may but touch his garment I shall be whole but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith hath made thee whole 
and the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the minstrels, and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in, and took her by the hand. And the maid arose, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See